get a crowd, just inspire you every week. Basically, my inspiration every week would be saying, it's okay no matter how it looks. It's all good. Man, this place would be packed. Some of, nah, I, won't, I ain't gonna get into that. All right, <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say that, so can't say everything, because fool utters all is mine. All right, so with developing that character, God wants to sit his super on your prepared character, which is your maximized natural. So uh, this is the thing. We've allowed our natural to be corrupted, and it, and it affects God's super landing strip. So the lights are not, remember that landing strip has to have clear lights, and they have to harmonize in a row. The plane sees just one line. But I suppose some lights are on, some lights are not. The plane doesn't see exactly accurately where to land. So you can't obstruct that light. So you can't take on the world. You can't take on sin. You can't take on compromise. You can't take on lust because what it does is it douses the light. So God's trying to land this super, but it can't because you're angry, because you're resentful, because you're bitter, because you're lustful, because you're in strife, because you're selfish. Right? Amen. I ain't saying no names. I'm just saying it's, 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 it's not, no one's getting on you like it's a crime. So some people live in selfishness and expect fulfillment. Now, now, if that was your child, you would call your child crazy. Like, what is wrong with you? Why are you expecting this to work out? And you, all you do is think about yourself. Well, ask yourself the same question. Actually, look at your children, and they're a reflection of you. What you're asking from them is what God has been asking for you, from you. And it's an amazing thing. We, we, want, we want what we're not willing to give. You can get anything you want in this life. Give it. Start with just giving it. Imagine just, just uh, I do it this way because I don't have no props up here. Imagine just, I need, I want something. And, and I'm, I'm just going to sit and wait for you to give it. Now, what am I doing? Nothing. But I'm expecting something. So that's like the farmer just looking out of the field and going, where's my harvest? That farmer got to sow some seed. Amen. And then it's not over. He has to water that thing. He has to make sure it's aerated. But he just doesn't, he's farming the land. <laughs> you know, he's not just sitting there looking at the land. But we're looking at people in our lives Okay, you say to yourself, well, I've given my time and my energy. Have you given your intercession? Amen. Are you interceding for that person every day? Because that's showing how important it is to you. Every day. Are you saying what you see or, saying what, or are you speaking what you desire from God? Amen. Right? Are you amplifying the obvious or what you desire? So anyway, um, so we have to, uh, remember in the last days the scripture says, depart from me. I do not know you, you worker of inequity. Depart from me, I do not know you. So he says, people are going to come in the last days and say, hey, I'm ready to go in. Do I know you? Have I had an intimate relationship with you? We were just talking earlier about once saved, always saved. I haven't had a... Have you been anywhere near me? So you've been living with the world, and now you want to spend eternity with me? See, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 3, and, and again, it's not, uh, it, may, it, it may have a feeling of conviction, but the goal today is not for condemnation. And there's a difference. Conviction, and we, we talked about this earlier, right? Like when a, you know, uh, the question was asked, when is a child, when are they accountable for their choices and their sins? And we were saying, when they're sensing conviction, now they're feeling the revelation of, I ain't doing right. So now they're, they're crossing over to accountability and responsibility. But there's a point where a child is like, they, they leaping into sin, playing in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but when there's a sense of conviction, conviction is just saying you're going too far. It's that, you know, like, like with, we're not dogs, right? 
But with the electric fence, you always hear me talk about the electric fence. When a dog crosses over that line, he gets a shock that says you're going too far. Our shock is conviction. So today, it may, you may sense conviction, but by no means, uh, uh, I know it's not God's intent, and, and I'm trying to yield to him, it's not my intent to condemn you. But the conviction, if you sense conviction, see, I don't know, I can't make you sense conviction. Only your disobedience or, you, or your compromise put you in a position of conviction. All I can do is give you what the word says, and then your conviction is like that thermostat. It measures, oh, I thought I was here, but I'm really here. So now that I'm not here, this is my target. So you should walk out of here with, if you're convicted with new targets. Right now, if you walk out here with condemnation, you're not going to set a target. You've given up, as if that's an option. And and it, and it only giving up is only an option because you're in the earth. But if right now we was all standing in at the door to eternity, ain't none of y'all going to want to give up because what you're feeling, what you're dealing with, what's what's weighing you down. Let's say it's a, a bitterness, or let's say it's resentfulness, let's say it's unforgiveness, let's say it's lust. That you can't quench because lust is insatiable. Y'all know that, right? You really can't quench it, right? All right. You walk that into eternity. So imagine living in eternity with a desire that can't be quenched. And there's no option of relief ever. It's almost like, you know how you, you itch sometimes you want to scratch it? You're scratching it for relief, right? Imagine having an itch that you can never scratch, ever, for the rest of your life. That's mild. Imagine having a pain that you have to carry for the rest of your life. Imagine the depression that sometimes you drink. Imagine living in that for the rest of your life. That's why, uh, you know, you, you guys may, we'll talk about it another time. This is not the purpose of this teaching, but that's why suicide ain't good. Because if you kill yourself, the state that you were in, is what you're going to carry into eternity. Wow. That's right. But you killed yourself for relief. Mm-hmm. All you did was magnify it forever. Wow. That's why God's bothered by that. God was like, why would you take, you're trying to be relieved. Why would you take your life? Now you can't even choose eternity and take that state, whatever's weighing you down, Somebody hurt you. Somebody abused you. Somebody did you wrong. Somebody played you. Somebody just doesn't appreciate you. Why would you take that and and plug it into eternity? All right? Just something to think about. So 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, it says, uh, but we uh, we all with open face beholding uh, as in a glass the glory of the Lord. So so, so we're opening ourselves up to, to, to... to the presence of God um, so we can line ourselves up with this image. The rest of the scripture says this, are changed into the same image. So I'm beholding God and his glory, his brilliance. And the scripture says, I'm I'm to to the point so I can be changed into the same image that I'm beholding. Right? It says, are changed into his, uh, are changed into his image from glory, from our glory, our limited glory, or the, you know, our glory that's smothered with some darkness and some fear and some things like that, to glory, right? And it says, even by the same spirit of the Lord. So the goal is he wants us to operate in his image, in, in, embedded in who he is. And Isaiah 55, let's go there real quick. Isaiah 29 says, that I know the thoughts that I think towards you. It says, uh, not evil thoughts, but to bring you an expected end. So God, the Father, in conversation with you this morning says, oh, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know, I know what my expectations are for you. These, they're not evil thoughts. There's nothing that would weigh you down. They're great thoughts. And when I think these thoughts, uh, Scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Think on these things, things that are pure, things that are just, things that are lovely. Things that are beautiful, right? It says, uh, think on pure things, right? 
is, and, 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 and what I think on, and, you know, out of the abundance of what I think on is what I'm going to express. So, you know, we were, uh, we were talking to the kids at Charlotte United. She had the, the, the girls. I had guys. And we ended up on the same topic, fear. And so, so I walked in the room after they talked, and they ended up on fear because the lights flickered, and one of the girls got scared. So they started talking about fear. So I said, oh, you watch a lot of horror movies or something? They talked about that. I walked in the room. To me, it was easy. It was like, oh, one of the symptoms is you're consuming yourself with fearful things and wondering why you're operating in fear. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You'll start to speak. Well, you don't want to go there. This might happen. Well, suppose somebody breaks in. You know, why? You done been watching all the break-ins in America on TV. <laughs> Every time something looks like it's safe, that music comes in. You're like, okay, it's a break in. Like, I, I walk into something she's watching. I was like, oh, baby, something bad about to happen. She said, how you know? Oh, the theme music. <laughs> There's a lead in here. And so you're absorbing this all the time, so it's going to speak out. But God says, the thoughts I think towards you are not evil. And look, look at this. So when God speaks, Isaiah 55, uh, 55, 11, it says, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper. Uh, it shall prosper in the thing wherein I sent it. So God speaking, when, when he blesses us, blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel of godly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight shall be in the law of the Lord, and in his law shall he meditate day and night. And his tree shall be like, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth fruit in the season, and whatsoever he doeth will prosper. That's uh, Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Right? So, 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 so God blessed, it says, is that man that doesn't compromise his character by being around the ungodly, nor stands in the way of those that are separating themselves from God, nor sits in the seat of those that are mocking God and being scornful. That person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth, producing what he was designed to produce in his season, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. So God says, my word will not return to me void. It will do what I accomplish is to do. So his word is a blessing. It's a verbal endorsement. God speaks his word out and opens doors ahead of us. That's what a blessing is. He says it'll accomplish what I sent it to do. So you're, you're trying to be in harmony with God? God's speaking things out ahead of you? It'll accomplish everything he said it's supposed to do, no matter how it looks. What we need to do is attach our faith to it. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask to think according to the power that worketh in him. Oh, that's going to happen. Exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask to do? I can't that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God, so I just need John 10, 10. God, I just need Ephesians 3.20. God, I just need Philippians 4.19. God, I just, God's like, my word's out there. I'm done. You, you just attach your faith to it. Amen. Now, what would be the opposite of that? Attaching our faith to the circumstances? God said my word will not return unto me void. My word has been spoken out and within my word is housed my image for you, my design for you. And if you keep your faith attached, you'll be changed into that image day by day. That word that I spoke out is your mirror. So every time you lose sight of who you are and what your purpose to do, look in the mirror. You get a reminder of who you are and what you're designed to do and to be. And when you feel weak, oh, he gives power to the faint. And them that have no might, he gives strength. That's what his word says. When you feel like giving up, we talked about don't have, don't have a ready mind last week. Don't have a fainting mind, a mind that's willing to give up. 